हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल वेलकम टू वन पेज बायोलॉजी इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द वेरी फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ इलेवेंथ स्टैंडर्ड एन सी आर टी बायोलॉजी द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक टूडे इज लिविंग वर्ल्ड सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इज the initial part or the introduction of the chapter so in introduction we are going to discuss today what are what are the important characteristics characteristics of living organisms okay now students uh, this is again an important topic because you need to have the clarity between what exactly is living and what is non living so if you know what are those characteristics which actually define the living organisms then it is very simpler or easier for you to define what exactly is living and what is non living so hence in today's video we are going to discuss these important characteristics okay so let us start with the characteristics now students if i ask you a simple question that what do we understand by the word living world right now the moment you hear about this particular word living world you can imagine that definitely you will answer in the living world there are different uh, things like there are oceans uh, some of you may say there are mountains uh, some of you will also say uh, there are rivers trees animals correct in fact some of you can also say something like the microscopic organisms which are nothing but the bacteria because even bacteria are part of the living world correct although we cannot see them with our naked eyes but still even the bacteria are part of living world so so many different things which we have included in the living world in fact there are many much uh, uh, much more things also in this living world something like the aquatic flora and fauna so there are so many living creatures below the water so even that is part of the living world so living world is a very very complex world where we can see that so many things are there so now here the question arises is then how can we define what is exactly living right the question arises is what is living so here as we have just mentioned few of the things like ocean mountains rivers question is can we say oceans is living or mountains is living or rivers is living trees are living so some of you might say that yes sir trees are living or some of you say might say animals are living but my question to you all would be then why not oceans are living or why not mountains are living so for that we need to know today certain characteristics so the answer to this question is we need to define certain characteristics 
which are necessarily present in the living organisms so once you know these characteristics then definitely you can define what is living and what is non living so let us understand few characteristics now let me tell you the very first characteristic something which is known as i'm sure you must have heard about this something called as growth now dear students can you tell me what do you understand by this word growth you have pretty often heard about this word growth maybe in your earlier standards even when you were in school so you would have heard about that obviously the body increases in size that is growth so let us just try to uh, you know understand growth in a simpler way suppose if i have to define growth in a biological way in a very very uh, biological language we can also say growth is nothing but increase in cell numbers right so we can say one growth is increase in cell numbers also we can say growth is increase in mass overall mass of the uh, object or for that matter the organism so it can be increase in mass as well as the volume correct okay we can also say growth is growth or rather growth leads to change in the shape change in shape of the object or the organism okay so these are the few factors which can help us in understanding about the growth okay so we know that growth means increase in cell numbers or increase in mass or change in shape now the question is now let us try to understand that whether the different living or non living things which we know according to us show growth so suppose if i ask you here that let's take example for example mountains now if i say mountains and if i ask you that are mountains showing growth are they showing growth so you will say some of you will say yes why because of course mountains how are they formed they are also formed by accumulation of sand correct they are formed by accumulation of sand and when we say accumulation of sand that means they are increasing in mass overall volume there is a change in the shape so of course mountains are growing over a period of time like it's a big long period of time how the mountains are formed like you have to study about the evolution of it so obviously it doesn't happen uh, in in a short span of time it takes years to form mountains and then mountains are gradually growing increasing in size so it's overall it's mainly because of the accumulation in sand but then definitely we can consider it as a growth correct so here although mountains are not made up of cells they are not made up of cells but still we can say that they are showing growth because there is increase in the overall mass as well as there is change in the shape of mountains so definitely we can say that mountains are satisfying the criteria of growth that means that when it comes to growth we can say that both living as well as non living objects can show growth yes or no since mountains are showing growth that means even the non living objects are showing growth 
that means that growth growth is not not a defining characteristic defining sorry. growth is not a defining characteristic of living organisms characteristic of living organism growth cannot be a defining characteristic of living organism sorry okay now let's on let's move to the next characteristic so we first define growth so growth is not a defining character okay now the next character now the second important character again is very much familiar to you all the second important character is again very much familiar to you all and the character is called as reproduction so dear students what is reproduction let us understand now reproduction we all know it is a process by which a living organism in simple words creates or forms its own kind right and that's how the living organisms basically continue their species and they are able to maintain their population so now here we need to understand that is reproduction a defining characteristic of living organisms now let us see that all the living organisms whether it is a bacteria or whether it is plants or if you talk about fungi or even if you talk about the animals every living form of organism is going to show reproduction correct but there are still certain exceptions to this for example in nature there are certain animals like for example mules now mules are basically formed by a reproduction between a horse and the donkey so mule is basically a sterile animal sterile means it cannot reproduce it cannot form its own kind so we can say that mules are sterile that means they will not be able to reproduce at the same time there are certain other organisms like for example sterile worker bees sterile worker bees even these are the examples of organisms which cannot reproduce that means in living nature there are many animals or different organisms which are not able to reproduce so as a result of this we cannot again say that reproduction is a defining character because if it has to say if it has to become a defining characteristic it has to be applicable for every living form but as i said that there are certain exceptions there are certain organisms which cannot reproduce that's why reproduction again is not a defining characteristic of living organism
now my question to you all or you can just consider this as your homework that you can just try and find out on your own some other examples of animals or living creatures which are sterile or which cannot reproduce okay and whatever answers you come out with you can definitely put them in the comment section now let us move on to the third important character now the third characteristic is metabolism now let us understand what is exactly metabolism in simple words metabolism means these are nothing but cellular reactions correct so what do we understand by the word cellular reactions cellular reaction means there are different types of reactions which are occurring in the cell some are catabolic reactions some are anabolic reactions correct catabolic means inside the cell larger molecules are broken down to smaller molecules for example glucose sorry for example starch is converted to glucose so starch is a large molecule you can say this it is a polysaccharide which is converted or broken down into a simpler molecule that is glucose so such a reaction will be considered as a catabolic reaction at the same time when smaller molecules are converted into larger molecules for example amino acids are converted into proteins so this is example of anabolic reaction so both catabolic and anabolic reactions together are important for the cell and they help in the functioning of the cells and that's why it is very very important for the overall growth and development of the organisms so is metabolism a defining characteristic of living organisms 100% yes so we can definitely say that every living organism will show metabolism or cellular reactions because without metabolism the cell cannot survive so yes it is a defining characteristic of living organism now here i would like to add something to the metabolism now if you consider certain extra cellular reactions or if you consider certain in vitro reactions what do we understand by the word in vitro reactions in vitro reaction means that which is carried out inside the lab so whenever it is carried out in the lab or you can say it is carried out inside the test tube such reactions are outside the cell so now simple question is if you talk about any of these reactions whether it is starch getting converted into glucose or amino acids getting converted into proteins both the reactions are possible inside a test tube which which we can do it very easily inside the lab laboratory that means that in vitro reactions or cellular reactions are very much possible inside the lab also but this reactions in vitro reactions which are carried out inside the test tube will not be considered as a living 
or can uh, or we cannot consider them as living because it is not part of the cell but yes when we talk about the cellular reactions all the reactions which are taking place inside the cell are considered as living so metabolism is definitely a defining characteristic of living organism let's move on to the next characteristic now the fourth characteristic is cellular interaction okay again a very very important characteristic what do you mean by cellular interaction now complex organisms like for example plants or animals have certain chemicals which are present in them in plants we consider them as growth factors like for example you must have heard about different hormones like auxins gibberellins etc so these hormones actually help in the overall development of the plants at the same time in animals there are different types of chemical interactions between the cells or sometimes in between the tissues and such these hormones help in maintaining homeostasis that is the balance balance in the functioning of organisms so this is possible by different types of chemicals which are also called as cytokines so in other words cellular interaction is seen in different types of organisms and hence even cellular interaction is a defining characteristic of living organism okay so now quickly let us revise what are the four different characters of living organism let us understand the first was we started off with growth we said growth is basically increase in cell numbers increase in uh, mass change in shape but we said that it is not a defining character why because even the non living organism or non living objects like mountains oceans they are also showing growth correct okay moving to the next one reproduction so we defined reproduction as ability to form ability of an organism to form its own kind but we said that there are certain organisms which are not able to reproduce example mules sterile worker bees etc so that's why even reproduction is not a defining characteristic of living organism then we spoke about the third characteristic which was okay i think we missed out on the the third characteristic which is so we also spoke about the third characteristic that is metabolism wherein we define metabolism as cellular reactions so cellular reactions like for example catabolic or anabolic reactions they are part of the cell even there are cell reactions which take place outside the cell or inside the lab so definitely metabolism is a defining characteristic of living organism and last characteristic which we discussed which is again a defining characteristic of living organism is cellular interaction so we spoke about bacteria or complex organisms like plants which consists of growth factors like auxin gibberellins even animals they release cytokines so these signals help in the overall development of the organism so cellular interaction again a is a defining characteristic of living organism so in total now we know that these four important characteristic of living organisms are defining characteristics of living organisms 
so i hope you have understood the concept of what is living in today's video if you have understood please do like share and subscribe to one page biology do share it with your friends and if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section if you want me to make videos on any other topic of biology let me know again in the comment section so see you all in the next video with some other biology related topic till that time take care of yourself thank you bye